I shine brightest when we're alone. Don't let the others see. What would they think? They would call you mad. Just you and I. No one else. What am I? Um, my invisible friend Osferadus who keeps opening and shutting the lights of the crusty crab and in my bedroom every day at 3am. Oh, Nosferatus. Why? Why do you do this to me? Hello everyone, new idea for a series. We cover a lot of mods here on the channel, and for every mod that is covered, 10 more rise up to take its place. Some mods require 3 hour long videos, other mods require a 1 hour video, and other mods require no videos at all, but rather, they require a complete memory wipe. But what of those mods in the middle? You know, the mods that are not so important, but still require their own spotlight. But perhaps that spotlight needs to be less bright than those of say Vigilant or Enderal. Well, this is where this series comes in. Every few months I will mention some of those mods and give you a mostly spoiler free breakdown of them so you can decide if they're worth adding to your next playthrough. Okay, starting things off with two mods called Glenmorel and Unslat. These mods are about a wonderful young man by the name of Janal the Black Owl and everyone's attempts at screwing him over. No no no, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Could you? Could you imagine though? No, please don't unsubscribe. I can make good videos, I swear. I can treat you better than this. I'll cover them, eventually. Okay, starting off for real this time. Mod number one, Clockwork. Clockwork is a housing and quest mod that takes the player to an abandoned mansion in a forgotten border between Skyrim and Morrowind. Story is, a dude once tried to start his own road network here through these rocky mountains, and while doing so, he said screw it, let's also make a mansion here too. While digging through the ground however, he found a Dwemer ruin which was apparently a Dwemer sick ward for people that were afflicted with a deadly disease. So what was in that Dwemer ruin? Well, these things. What exactly are these things I hear you ask? Well, I'm not gonna tell you. You're gonna have to play the mod to find that out. This mod does the Vigilant thing where it finds a small, not well expanded on concept of the Elder Scrolls lore and expands on it in its own way. And here it works brilliantly. Here for example, we have the concept of the Dwemer being fascinated by artificial life and asking the question, how far could that fascination possibly go? This is the question Clockwork seeks to answer. Now gameplay wise, this mod doesn't have anything revolutionary. It's at most a 3 hour quick adventure in a free house. However, as with most good things, it's not just about the plot, it's about how it's presented. How is it presented, I hear you ask? Well, two words, steampunk, horror. There are no jump scares, no tricks, and still in my first playthrough I was looking at every corner making sure that no robot was giving me the laser eyes. The aesthetic of this mod is on point. You know the Monothon nailed this department when halfway through the quest I just posted a bunch of paintings on the wall? There's a lot of mysteries and secrets to be found here, about the nature of these robots, the mansion itself, and the fate of the people that once lived in it. But by god, none of that matters now. Because Fran Dixis, Funeral of the Vikings, um, uh, I mean, Funeral of an Ord, begs to be seen. This is also the best housing mod in the entire game, at least practically wise. You teleport here using a spell, meaning just one loading screen, and not three or four as with other houses in Skyrim. It also has a room for every profession and everything is labeled, so you won't mess things up instantly by making a chest a dump all your useless crap chest. Now, what are the bad things about this mod? Well, there is something I wish this mod didn't do. Sometimes it tries to make actual horror in the form of a chase sequence or something haunting you, and in the start it even tries to do something resembling a jump scare. However, and it is sad to say, it kind of falls flat. There are barely any other engines that can create a sense of rustic atmosphere like the Skyrim engine can. It just works. On a similar note however, there is no worse engine to do horror than the creation engine, especially given the limited resources of your average motor. No matter how much of a loud siren you put as a sound effect to when a ghost comes near me, I will always be able to tell that the ghost is just a dark elf with a bunch of red tattoos under its eyes. This is a minor complaint though, don't let my nitpicking distract you from the fact that this mod is absolutely worth playing. Number 2. Voyage to the Dreamborn Isles I love this mod. I can find no fault to it. You know those expensive dishes you get at fancy restaurants that make up for like 10% of the plate they're served in? Well, this mod is kinda like that. It knows what it wants to be and it does it incredibly well. And what it wants to be is a journey inside a dream realm inside the Elder Scrolls universe. Technically, it is called Moonshadow and is part of the realm of Azura. The realm has been inaccessible to mortals by now, but a bunch of mages figured out that it can't be accessed through meditation. Enter Bedging. So we sleep in a hermit's bed and wake up in a completely different realm. And it is beautiful. There are so many scenes and so many different color palettes used to make the environment of this mod that if I were to show them all to you, it will probably lengthen the video by like 10 minutes. Also, the music in this mod is perfect. It fits the theme, it is calming, and it hits just right. Just have a listen.
gameplay wise it is also 10 out of 10 behold i present to you with bated breath the first mod to ever make good jumping puzzles using the creation engine i know what you're all wondering how can it possibly do this? Well, by rewriting the interaction points with the assets entirely. Genius. Furthermore, this mod understands the fundamentals of Skyrim combat more than a decade after the game came out. Those fundamentals being that we're all pretty much bored of Skyrim's combat at this point, which is why there is very little combat in this mod. Even when there is combat, it always has its own spin, like, say, introducing a bow that pierces a lot of armor and reloads twice as quickly. The mod then encourages you to use it by boosting the armor of your enemies, but it doesn't restrict you from using any other weapons either. This this mod also succeeded in the rare feel of making puzzles that are difficult enough to make me scratch my hair, yet not annoying enough to make me google the solution. Now that's a thin line, and this mod has managed to find it. I can see some people getting stuck in them, but I am just glad that for once, that person wasn't me. The Dreamborn Isles themselves are homes to a lot of adventures that, well, resemble a fever dream more than a normal questline. They are barely coherent, they jump from one scenario to another just like a random thought, and they can be completely random. Just like... Yes, a dream. Why did the Dragonborn join a voyage with a bunch of sailors to who knows where? And why did they crash in an island with a fountain of life in it? And why is infinite water coming from this house? And what is this place? All these questions have no answers. Now go play this mod. It's pretty good. Am I perhaps overselling this mod? No, trust and believe I have my reasons for liking it so much. You see, after I had to do the Carl Jung deep dive for the end of the video, well, let's just say dreams have been kinda hidden different. And I'm digging it. It's like living through a thousand lifetimes in a single night, only to then wake up at the exact moment when I was about to ask Obama why he was taking me to Brazil. I guess I will never know. Number 3. Siren Root. Siren Root is a newer mod which takes the player to a bunch of alien ruins that have some kind of secret in them. It is definitely one of the best dungeon calling mods I have ever played, and it kinda reminds me of the Forgotten City in a way, which is a pretty good thing. It is focused around certain characters, and based on your interaction with those characters, you get different endings. So, what makes this mod different than any other dungeon calling mod for Skyrim, of which there are plenty of by this point? Well, first of all, the puzzles. They're amazing. They utilize a lot of different mechanics that would give Todd Howard a seizure. Case in point, water physics. Look. At. It. This is the Skyrim that never was, never could be rising before our eyes. Of course, half of the puzzles can be turned off using water breathing potions, but come on now, don't be like that. Just go for the fun. However, it isn't just limited to water physics. There's the classic color matching puzzle, find the crystals to progress to the next area, time puzzles, sequence puzzles. There are even some sections where you take control of an NPC to solve a puzzle as them, and none of them feel too difficult. Also, the mod utilizes some wall climbing physics to make the dungeons less linear. Now this, you see this? This is innovation. Story-wise, it's not that rich, but it doesn't have to be. Till the are, the Elliot's did thing, it was a very bad thing, something has been trapped in here for a while, and the only way to get out of here is through it. Good luck champ. Okay, let's see, what else does this mod have going on for it? Well, there is a seal of here, and it makes for some pretty good thumbnails. 10 out of 10, would play. It makes for a fun afternoon, and it also makes your brain work. Unreal only knows, we need to work that thing. Identity crisis. Hey guys, it's been a rough bunch of days ever since the end of all video. Um, you know, one day you're trying to make a video about a scary mod, the next day you're starting Carl Young, and the day after that, you don't even know who you are anymore. Why am I always dreaming of Joe Swanson? What does it all mean? Sometimes I see myself in the mirror, and I see one person. Then I look at my projection in the water, and I see another person. Then I get out of my room, someone says hello to me, and I don't even know who they're greeting. Every time I talk with someone, I don't feel like I'm communicating with them. I just find myself asking, what do they want to hear out of me? I don't think I know how to be genuine with someone. But what is more, I don't know how to be genuine with myself. On a completely unrelated note, the fourth mod is called Identity Crisis. This mod takes the player to the Asylum of Julianus. Story here is, a guy here did a bad thing to a bunch of patients, Shogorath saw it, and said, you son of a bitch, I'm in. There is a double layer of identity crisis going on in this mod. The people in the asylum lost sight of who they are and the reason they are there, and Shogarath is also going through it because he isn't sure who he completely is either. After the events of the Shivering Isles, is he good old Uncle Shio? Is he Jigolak? Is he the champion of Kavach? I don't know, you don't know, and according to this mod, he isn't sure either. This mod plays a lot like clockwork. You get in a place, you go through a bunch of quests in said place, you learn the backstory of said place, and then you get said place as your house. What quests do you do in this place? Well, put it to you this way. Any quest that has me googling which mental illness does what is a good quest in my book. Also, this mod does two things exceptionally. Assets and audio. Look at those assets. Look at them. Funguses out the wazoo. Look at this book. 
Look at it. Look at this. Nothing too crazy, but it doesn't have to be. All it has to do is set the right mood, which is what it does. And if the mushrooms are the things setting the mood, the audio turns them into atmosphere. Just listen to it. Welcome, mortal! Make yourself at home. Have a cup of tea. No doubt you're wondering what you've just stumbled upon. Nothing good, I can assure you. Oh, tut, pay this one no mind. He's a stick in the mud, he is. As I said before, go on, have a peek. You'll all see. Tell me that doesn't sound like the voice of the original Shiogorath, but it isn't. Massive shoutouts to the voice actor here. Also, even after you complete this quest and gain this place as a home, you gain access to a bunch of different systems, meaning there is more content. If you are roleplaying, and a lot of you apparently are, it's not for every roleplay run because it turns you into a Daedra worshipper, but if you are making an evil character, knock yourself off. It's a perfect house for a Daedra worshipper. So I'll complain. Whoever thought of making invisible enemies with terrible hitboxes clearly didn't think this through enough. But the person who then said, okay, we should also give those enemies a long ass paralysis spell is clear at the very least as corrupt as Shogorath and at worst an active war criminal. Number 5. The Rigmore mods. Two to be exact, Rigmore of Bruma and Rigmore of Cyrodiil. Before I quote unquote showcase these two mods, I gotta come clean and set the stage for this showcase properly by saying that um, in my years of messing around with Skyrim mods, this is maybe the first time that I could not stomach to finish a mod. In fact, all I could do is two hours before throwing my hands in the air and going, screw it, this ain't for me, I'm out. I severely did not like these mods, and I could not for the life of me give them a full playthrough. So for that, I'm sorry. So Kotho, what are your grievances? Well, where do I start? The Rikmo series is comprised of two mods that detail the adventures and escapades of Rikmo of Bruma and the Dragonborn. Apparently, this child has a lot going on with her, none of whom I ended up caring for. Listen, the gameplay in this mod is very much like the gameplay of The Last of Us 2, meaning that there is very little gameplay in this mod, just going from one quest to the other. A la Vigilance Act 1. Technically, Rigmor of Cyrodiil opens up a huge chunk of the map of Cyrodiil, but there is nothing to do there beyond the actual quest of Rigmor itself. These mods therefore depend on the dialogue and the narrative they present. So, how is the dialogue and the narrative in Rigmor? It's terrible, for me at least, but I just want to say that if you do like it, good on you, you are a better person than I am, but I personally have a bunch of problems with it. First of all, the author seems to have some understanding of the Elder Scrolls franchise and its narrative, but not completely, therefore some bits and pieces kinda of fall flat. Okay, what do I mean by this? Look at these clips, you answer me, what seems to be the problem with them? Oh, I need to make some soup for her, we're gonna need to build her up. Some protein and iron supplement, like venison for meat, and cabbages. Like you're my guardian angel now? Dear viewers, I have to note there is not a single reference to angels in the entirety of the Elder Scrolls franchise. In fact, characters like Morakos who can be described as angels are not described as angels and are instead described as winged bullmen because there are no reference to angels in this entire franchise. It is also worth noting that the Elder Scrolls franchise is playing out in a society that is at most early to middle medieval ages. Why would there be knowledge about micronutrients such as protein and iron? And why would a random huntress know such things? You might be thinking that I'm applying double standards here. After all, I liked Wheels of Lol and Legacy and they go above and beyond such inconsistencies. But here's the thing, these mods use said inconsistencies to simply tell a different story. Rigmore mods just throw them all over the place and to no end whatsoever. I feel like most of my complaints would have been circumvented if the author just placed a quota sign on it, like Wheels of Lol did, but it didn't. In fact, it's trying to be a continuation of the main story, or at least an expansion to it. In fact, this mod begins very near the first quest of Arila Skyrim. Therefore, you are encouraged to pick it up early on and develop it alongside the main quest. It's trying to be a serious thing like an expansion to the main quest, but it falls flat, at least lore-wise. Moreover, if I had to describe the actual dialogue of the mod itself, I would describe it as similar to those books that have the title of the subtle art of not giving a fuck. It's trying to be realistic, but to no artistic end. Let's say, hypothetically, you were a mass killer who destroyed entire villages worth of elves and left only ash and ruin in your path. If you were to say die, chances are you wouldn't be chanting on and on about rain washing the blood away and the wind of kind and a child playing with the wolf while a piano was playing in the background. You would probably just be sitting in a corner bleeding it out. However, just because it is highly unrealistic doesn't mean it's not good because as we all know, it is. And just because you make something sound realistic, doesn't mean it's gonna be good. 
Okay then. Well, you had better get it right, or I'll rip your balls off and feed them to the slaughterfish. By the way, I'm not comparing the two mods, I'm just showing an example to pass a point. Realistic dialogue doesn't automatically make it good dialogue. Especially because the voice actors give me the vibe that they didn't know what they were actually voice acting for, so it ends up sounding even worse. I also want to point out that about 90% of the quote-unquote options in this mod are there just to let you decide who you want to fornicate with, which, eh, whatever at this point. Finally, there is the character of Rickmore herself. I want to make a quick PSA for all aspiring writers out there. Just because you tell me a character was beaten and abused off camera doesn't automatically make them more likable. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Rickmore talking. What? You going to hand me in? Well, here I am. It's going to be the only chance you'll get. Oh, yeah? How do you figure that one out? <sighs> yeah, I'm sorry. She is insufferable. Rigmore is like Ellie from The Last of Us did a fusion dance with the main character from the My Immortal fanfiction and this tells you all you need to know about her. Also the mod does this thing where it generates conflict by having the characters doing the dumbest choices imaginable. In the beginning you go to Riverwood where you see a banner with her face and name on it and a bunch of Thalmo tell you that if you see this girl you should let them know about it. So obviously you have to not let them know that you know this girl. But that the huntress you found Rickmore with tells you to take her caras to Riverwood to get it repaired. And while you are there, you find a bunch of bandits looking for her and straight up just tell them, oh yeah, this is Rickmore's. Which they could already tell because the caras has Bruma's insignia on it. The thought of maybe, I don't know, going to a different town or getting the Dragonborn to repair it or, mm, I don't know, getting her a different caras for now apparently never crossed anyone's head. I could go on and on, but you get the point. I just don't think this mod is very well written. Yet, I must reiterate what I previously said. If you got something from this mod, all the better for you. If you are making, say, a hardcore Imperial run, you might want to consider it just for the map of Cyrodiil alone. But here, I ought to give you a word of advice. If you are to play this mod, play the rebooted versions, because there is a certain event that happens during the Rick mod of Cyrodiil then, in which you encounter a statue of Mara, and then something happens which I can only describe as, um, exorbitantly cringy fanfiction. My soldiers, Good luck. And with that, this video concludes. Tell me what you think about this mini series in the comments below. Also, feel free to give me recommendations on what mods you want to see me cover. Like, comment, subscribe. Uh, if you have the free time, just do my taxes. Uh, you can also do none of those things if you don't wanna. More content to come soon. Mates 1 and Mates 2 is next. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all soon. Bye. Sorry, I can be an asshole at times. My social skills are somewhat lacking.